Okay, today we're talking about the 2014 movie Fist of the Dragon, starring MMA fighter Josh Thompson. Now this is a Roger Corman produced movie. Roger Corman, very famous for those straight to video movies and exploitation flicks of the 70s. Death Race 2000 comes to mind, the original one. So straight away we know we're going to be getting something that's very kind of tongue-in-cheek, straight to video type quality of a film, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, and sort of something that we come to expect from martial arts flicks anyway. Directed by Anthony Zeto and written by Justin Fox. Notable stars in the film include Juju Chan as Josh Thompson's girlfriend, the very talented Maria Tran who plays an assassin, and Daniel White as Thorn, the main bad guy. You've seen Daniel White in a few martial arts movies here and there, most notably recently with Triple Threat. So back to director Anthony Zeto, also a fight choreographer and stunt coordinator. He's trained in various martial arts, so he definitely knows his stuff. In 2007, he directed a Jackie Chan produced film called Wu Shu, which starred a personal favourite of mine, Sam Hung. So for those of you who don't know, Josh Thompson is currently a mixed martial arts fighter. Competing in Bellator MMA, he's also competed in Strike Force and the UFC. Well versed in wrestling, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and of course Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Fist of the Dragon was Josh Thompson's movie debut. And well, I think he did a pretty good job, considering. Josh is doing the best he can with the material that he has. Now again, being a Roger Corman style type of a film, like I said, he can only do what he can do. He's a very 1980s style straight to video type of a good guy. A hero is in the wrong place at the wrong time. The girl is involved. Adventure begins. His on-screen fighting is great. And I think he was fun to watch. Juju Chan plays the girlfriend of the film, the so-called damsel in distress. It's unfortunate that she doesn't get to do any martial arts in this movie because of her role. In real life, she's well versed in Kung Fu and Taekwondo, so she definitely knows her stuff, but unfortunately doesn't get to display any of her martial arts talents in the film. Miss Chinatown 2009 winner and has a master's degree in film and television. Also a singer and a musician. She did quite well in her scenes in this film. Again, she could only do what she could with the role that she had. In 2013, she represented Hong Kong in the Taekwondo World Championship in Bulgaria. In 2014, she competed in Thai kickboxing in Hong Kong as well. And on top of it all, she was the associate producer on this film. As I said before, Daniel White plays the bad guy of the movie. He's clearly well versed in many different styles of martial arts and plays quite the menacing villain. He does a great job of hiding his Australian accent. I think it's towards the end, there's a few times where he actually raises his voice in anger that the Australian accent kind of comes out. But apart from that, everything else was spot on. Daniel White and Maria Tran both do standout performances. They're great fun to watch. Which brings us to Rambo Kong. Now Rambo Kong, you may have seen him in the Dragon, the Bruce Lee story from the 90s. Quite the exceptional athlete. He's been in the martial arts Hong Kong film industry through the whole glory days. He's worked with and assisted guys like Bono Jung, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Cynthia Khan, Jackie Chan, just to name a few. He's been involved with just about anybody who's anybody in the industry. And much like his character in Dragon the Bruce Lee story, he gets to attack the hero with a meat cleaver in a really fun fight scene. Now something I want to mention about the movie itself is its visual style. When I first sat down and watched the film, something didn't seem right visually. I couldn't put my finger on what it was. And I think it's the absence of typical filters. The absence of any sort of film grain or telescene wobble or anything like that. Again, it's a very digital film and it really does look digital. And I think that kind of detracts for me. It was very hard for me to watch because there's something about it that doesn't seem, doesn't seem right. To be honest, what I actually did viewing wise was I put a filter in myself to kind of give it a film grain to, to kind of make it look like it was filmed with analog material and visually it looked so much better to me and it was so much more palatable I just I just couldn't watch it the way it was before there's something else that bothers me a bit about the film was a lot of the fights seem to start out of nowhere they're very forced especially like the office fight scene in the beginning it's kind of like seriously what is this a video game plot Again, not always such a bad thing, but I could see how it would irritate non-martial arts movie watchers. I mean, there's so many nonsensical scenes that take place in this film, and your common sense kind of jumps in your head and think, well, why didn't he just call the police then? Or why didn't he just do this or do that? Instead, things take turns that they shouldn't have to. 
The movie moves along at a reasonable pace. The fight choreography is spectacular. It's just you couldn't fault it. It was great. On display were different styles of martial arts as well, so it wasn't just one type of style that you were watching. The downside to the choreography were any scenes where somebody took a gun out. For some reason, everybody in this movie knows how to dodge bullets. If somebody shoots at somebody, they just... Apparently all you have to do when somebody shoots at you in this film universe is just turn your head and the bullets will go right past you. There were so many times where people were just shooting and missing. It was kind of like, well, why even have those scenes in the film? You know everybody's going to rag on them. And then I think there was one scene where they've run out of bullets and the first thing that came into my head was a scene from Get Smart where, or was it The Naked Gun? I can't remember. Where the guy runs out of bullets and just throws the gun at the other guy and knocks him out with the gun. It's just, the film could have done without any of that gunplay. It was just a bit ridiculous. Light choreography was enough. Like I said, it was spectacular. You didn't need to add those other things into it. A bit forced and annoying was the sidekick that gets introduced somewhere in the middle of the film and becomes Josh Thompson's sidekick, so to speak. Her character is just very awkward. She seems to have been placed in there and it just doesn't fit. And she seems to have come out of nowhere, which just felt uncomfortable. Overall, a fine straight-to-video or DVD martial arts action movie. Josh Thompson does a great job. Daniel White, Maria Tran, they're all great fun to watch. Again, it's the material that they have to work with. And the standout for this movie is definitely the fight choreography. Just fantastic. So, if you're into these types of films, check it out.